This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 105, featuring Kate Flanders of blondeonabudget.ca. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. What's going on, Life Optimizers? Welcome to Optimal Living Daily, or the old podcast. I'm Justin Mollick with another super special edition of Old. It's the week-long celebration of the 100th episode, and I'm having authors read their own content to you. And today, you get to hear from Kate Flanders herself. Thank you so much, Kate, for taking the time to do this just for us oldies. Having read over 100 blog posts, I know how difficult it is and how time-consuming it can be especially with editing and everything. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think that's enough of an intro, so let's bring on Kate and start optimizing your life. You Weren't Born to Pay Off Debt and Die by Kate Flanders of Blonde on a Budget. I've seen this picture float around the internet that says, you weren't born to pay bills and die. I can see the point it's trying to make. Life is about more than working and paying bills. But not to burst the picture's bubble, the simple fact is that there will always be bills to pay. Unless you become the man who quits money, you are always going to have to pay for something, like utilities or a phone service. So, while I agree that you weren't born to pay them, you will, in fact, probably always have to. What you don't have to do forever is live with debt. You don't have to spend every month calculating how much you can afford to put towards debt repayment while continuing to use credit and staying in the never-ending cycle of borrowing money and trying to pay it back. It's not an easy cycle to get out of, I know that firsthand, but it is a cycle that will not only control your finances, it will control your mind and your life, and our time on this planet is far too short to let debt control your life. I don't mean to sound morbid, but I've been thinking about life a lot lately specifically what exactly it is that I'm doing with mine. When I turned 29, I began to have a sort of panic attack about turning 30, as though the number somehow marked a milestone in which I must have crossed off a certain list of goals. By the time I turned 30, I realized the numbers didn't matter, nor did the list of goals. All that mattered was that I was doing my best and I was happy with my life, and I was, and still am today. I can look back and tell you that I still haven't crossed off most of the items on that imaginary 30 before 30 goal list. I still haven't gotten a new tattoo or taken a painting class or a pottery class. I haven't run a half marathon yet or gone bungee jumping or skydiving. And I haven't driven across Canada or traveled to Europe yet either. But it's okay. It doesn't matter that I didn't do those things before 30 or any other age. What matters is that I wake up every morning and think, yes. This is the life I want. What matters is that every time I reach a crossroads, I choose the route that aligns with my goals and my values, because that's the only way to live a life where you can wake up and think, yes, this is what I want. I've been working on a project that has required me to take myself back three, five, even ten years from now and reflect on who I was and why I did the things I did. It hasn't exactly been a pleasant experience, eye-opening for sure, but not pleasant. As I worked through those memories, however, I was reminded of how drastically different my life is today, in a good way. No, a great way. And that's because of the decisions I made when I reached certain crossroads. The most important one was the day I finally forced myself to decide if I was going to keep drinking or not. I couldn't have achieved any of the things I've written about on my blog if I was still drinking. In fact, my guess is the blog wouldn't even exist. I likely would have deleted the whole thing in a fit of self-consciousness. There is no doubt that sobriety is part of the life I want. The second most important crossroads I've reached appeared on the day I decided I wasn't going to keep using credit to float my lifestyle. You might think I got there on the day I realized I was maxed out, but that's not true. I didn't have a choice then. I was maxed out, so I had to stop using credit. No, I reached that crossroads about six months later, when some of my debt was paid off and I finally had some available credit. I chose not to use it then, and I choose not to use it now. Being debt-free is part of the life I want. We reach crossroads every single day of our lives, many of them in fact. When you wake up in the morning, you choose to be happy or grumpy. 
When you walk into the kitchen, you choose if you're going to eat something healthy or indulge in something your body probably doesn't need. When you're invited to hang out with friends, you choose if you're going to go or stay at home. When you go home for the day, you choose how you're going to spend your time. And when you think about buying something, you reach two crossroads. The first asks if you're going to buy it or not. The answer to that probably lies in a mini crossroads of whether it's a need or a want. The second asks if you have the money or if you're willing to go into debt for it. Every time you go into debt to buy something, you are making a choice. You are choosing to give up some amount of your next paycheck, your time by having to work more hours to pay it off, and your mental capacity which stores the stress and anxiety we carry when we owe money. You are also choosing to take on the physical reactions that come with carrying that stress and anxiety around. If you've ever been in debt or are currently in debt, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. Fortunately, there is another way to live. When you reach that crossroads and decide you want to buy something, you can choose to wait until you have the money for it. You can also choose not to buy it at all, especially if it doesn't align with your goals and values. But if you decide to get it, you can choose to wait. You can choose to pay with cash. You can choose to take the route that comes with the least amount of stress and anxiety. You can choose to not owe anyone money. You weren't born to pay off debt and die. You don't have to spend every month calculating how much you can afford to put towards debt repayment while continuing to use credit and staying in the never-ending cycle of borrowing money and trying to pay it back. It's not an easy cycle to get out of, I know that firsthand. But it is a cycle that will not only control your finances, it will control your mind and your life. And our time on this planet is far too short to let debt control your life. You might get 85 years on this planet, don't spend 65 paying off a lifestyle you can't afford. You just listened to the post titled, You Weren't Born to Pay Off Debt and Die by Kate Flanders of BlondeOnABudget.ca, narrated by Kate Flanders. And if you enjoyed hearing her voice, which I'm sure you did, you can hear more of it because she too has a podcast and it's called Budgets and Cents. So you can check that out as well. And again, thank you so much, Kate. That was awesome. And I'm happy you were part of this very special week here at Optimal Living Daily. And before I get out of here, really quick, if you want to show your support for this podcast, it's really easy and very free to join my weekly newsletter. And on top of that, you'll be entered to win a free book every month, plus get a free money tracking spreadsheet and a video tutorial to go along with it, plus more. So to do that, head on over to oldpodcast.com or you can text the word OPTIMAL to the number 44222. Again, that's the word OPTIMAL to 44222, and that's the fastest way to bring a smile to my face. And that is episode 105, and tomorrow will most likely be the last day of celebrations. I originally planned to create my own content, uh, talking about gratitude since I've been keeping a daily gratitude journal for over six months now. But coincidentally, I got in contact with an author who happened to have a chapter in her book about exactly what I wanted to talk about myself. And she jumped on the opportunity to record the chapter just for you guys. So stay tuned tomorrow for the finale of this week's celebrations. And I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.